Hello and welcome to the Pet Healer Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Missy Vargas, and today we're talking about safety. Safety, we're in the water. Here in Florida, we're experiencing scorching ter- temperatures this summer, and a lot of the people escape to the beach or ponds or a pool, and they want to take their furry companion with them. Well, that's great, but we have to be careful. There are some hazards hidden hazards that you need to be aware of. And they all depend on what body of water you're thinking about. So in the pool, I would first let you know, not all dogs are natural born swimmers. And actually, some dogs will com- will completely confuse you, uh, some golden retrievers that don't like water. And then my pugs who know how to swim from early age and they love water. And usually you would think that a, po- a pug or a Frenchie will sink down to the bottom, but they can be taught how to uh, swim, and some of them actually enjoy it. So, I mean, we're not going to be uh, breeders, or, uh, you know, but we're going to make sure that each dog either enjoys it, that we at least teach them how to get in and out of the pool safe, safely. And that's very important because there are always the, st- the steps, but if the dog doesn't know, is not trained to know where to go, then... Uh, they will panic and they can drown. And that will be very sad indeed. Um, But you can start uh, teaching the dog uh, to enjoy the pool. If the dog is not certain about it, uh, do it just gradually in the shallows and then gradually allow them to get into the deep. You can use uh, doggy life vests and they can help the, the dog stay afloat and enjoy it. Um, and of course, you know, you should always have pool play time be completely supervised because you don't know what they do. They could, especially if you have more than one dog, they could be fighting really rough or, you know, or playing really rough. And then, you know, they can hit something and be unconscious and lose their life just because they, it was just an accident. So accidents can happen. So always, if you have the dogs in the pool, be around. Another thing that happens, and we've seen at least three cases this week, and it's only Wednesday <laughs> when I'm recording. And I've seen three cases of dogs that come with completely debrided pads. And that's very painful. One of one of them came in because it wouldn't walk. And it, when we look, the, the pads are completely gone. The, the epithelial covering, the, the skin pad, um, you know, layer is completely torn from friction. And they said, well, we were at the pool at night, you know, in the afternoon, but the bricks, if you have a brick or a concrete around the pool, that concrete holds the heat for a long time. And so imagine that heat added with the dog running around like a maniac, and the, that friction creates a lot of heat and thermal injuries happen that way. And so very, very painful. I mean, obviously manageable with painkiller rest and antibiotics to prevent any infection, but it is unnecessary trauma for the dog and unnecessary expenses for the owner if we can just uh, be aware of and, and keep ourselves, you know, with, with clean. So uh, if you have a maniac in the pool and there's always jumping in the pool the minute they can they can get into it, you can also install a baby pool fence uh and that will keep your uh, fairy dogs, uh, fairy friends out of it. Um, and hopefully, if you're not aware, if they go in and out of the house, and you can just limit their exposure to the pool. And always uh, try to have a saltwater pool or try to avoid using the pool the day after, the day off, and the day after the pool has been treated with chlorine because that's very, very damaging for the eyes and the mucous membranes. And also when they drink it, I have a, I've had a cat that used to live all around the, um, not myself, but a patient, and it kept coming for uh, GI issues like a, and like problems with the GI, vomiting a lot, diarrhea often, and uh, an early kidney disease. And one of the things we thought, well, this cat always drinks from the pool and maybe that was a factor that um, affected the kidneys and affected the GI. So there's a lot of things that we have to take in, in you know, awareness and be mindful of. And then the other thing that I was going to say, the ponds, not all water bodies are created equal. The ponds in Florida in the heat, like we experience, every time the temperature goes over 95 degrees, they, there is a chance 
and over 100 degrees like we've had, um, it, there's a chance that there's an algae bloom. And the algae bloom is a uh, cyanobacteria too, uh, and the algae bloom can cause death, and it's unfortunately seldom you, you have a successful treatment. They usually die within 24 hours or less of drinking the water that has the um, that specific algae bloom, and so or cyan, yeah, the cyanobacteria. And so it's very important to um, not go to the beach when there is those um, the red dye off of those bacteria, but also the ponds. The ponds do have that too. And in the ponds, there's also gators and water moccasins. These things exist in Florida. And so we have to be very careful that if they go to the pond, that they not get dragged by a, a gator like we've seen in the news or that they can be bitten by a moccasin. And so when you have the dog, don't let them jump into the pond. Always have a leash because you could probably avoid a, a, a gator attack or avoid some problems if you can have a hold of the dog and you can pull them out. Uh, also, the ponds, we don't know how deep they are. So, you know, there's a little danger there. The dog could get in too deep. Um, the other thing with the... Um, with the ponds is that usually there's a lot of water plants or plants that are grow very close to the border of the pond and the dogs chew on them and some of them are very toxic here in Florida. So be careful about that too. And when it comes to the other water body, the sea, the ocean, is wonderful to take your dogs to the beach, especially if it's a beach that allows dogs. Don't break the law. Don't go against the rules. But you also have to be careful about the sand. If you're walking in the sand and it's too hot for you, then imagine your dog is going to have the pads peeled. So it's not a good idea. And then the other thing that you can uh, run into trouble is if the dog keeps uh, swimming farther from the um, edge of the um, beach and the, the sand, and then it goes a little bit deeper there are currents and they're not that far off the uh beach shore um but there are some um marine currents that could take your dog and yourself <laughs> you know trying to save your dog and that's not good uh also always remember it, you know to uh, watch the water intake because when they drink the water in the ocean they can be extremely sick they can cause hypernatremia and they could die from ingesting too much uh, sodium with the um, seawater so be very careful about that provide always uh, fresh water especially if you have like a little um, uh, if you bring your own supplies and you have ice that would be good to have like ice cool water use the uh, from the bottom of your um, container where you have all your uh, ice uh, beverages use that ice water they love it they will love it and it will assure you that they'll prefer that than to drink from the sea and uh, they will keep it hydrated i always tell people just get one of those collapsible bowls they sell everywhere they're really really um, easy to just put in your beach pack and and just have it ready so that you can make sure your furry friend is hydrated and with the right water, not the seawater. And then also rinse them afterwards because the this, this high salt con content plus the heat and the friction of the sand could cause a lot of skin infections and abrasions in the skin. And so um, especially if there's any um, unbeknownst to you, if there's any bacteria, any um, because of the sewage and, and everything, those areas that they allow the dogs to go in, they're not primo spots for people. So sometimes we get a lot of water contaminants. So if we can at least rinse them off their pet, that was a, a good idea after going into the ocean, then make sure your you and your furry friends get a, a really rinse off of all those contaminants. Uh, I hope that those are common sense things and sometimes we don't think about it. But now that I said it, you know better, don't do it. <laughs> Take care of your pet, have a wonderful summer. 
full of uh, wonderful memories with your pets uh, at the beach or the pond or the pool. But just be safe. Until the next episode, stay well. <laughs>